I try to be mindful of the language that we use as well because oftentimes we'll say oh i have to i have to do this i have to i have to go to work no you don't have to go to work you want to go to work like oh i have to do this thing no you don't no you don't you don't have to you want to no matter what it is like you want to and like when we start to own that then all right there but there's other now the only caveat to that is there are other people who want things who are real people and may impinge upon what you want right right? like you can't want somebody else and have that want you know like some shit will happen to you that maybe you don't want you know and that's just life you know a fucking tree could fall and smash your car like a one of those all-state commercials or something (laughs) you know mayhem right some shit some shit can happen got it and you doesn't mean that you wanted that you know just because it happens you could if you had <laughs> it a particular how far you want to if, take if you, it. <laughs> depends on your worldview depends yeah, exactly. on your cosmology depends on how much you influence that however i do believe that the tree itself has consciousness and the tree itself in its ultimate yeah. idea has its own consciousness its own its own path everything has every other person has their own sacred choice so it's not just all about us there is a there's a world but most everything that we do is from our want and when we start to realize that we're wanting this and then what do we really want oh i want to go to i have to go to work is i want to go to work i want to go to work because i want the security or i want to feel needed or i want to contribute depending on what your want is for that or i'm afraid of so i want to mitigate the fear of losing this security like you start to go all the way back deeper 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 and you start to realize there's a couple big things i want to be safe Mm -hmm. i want to be seen i want to be loved you know i want to like it really gets simple i want to be needed which goes to purpose i want to matter you know i want to want to contribute in a way that matters so you start to reduce and like all right these are we're all having the same the same soup of wants but we've just separated ourselves from it and created a, a loop a web of obligation and and this kind of like exculpability which is really the denial of our power that superpower that you mentioned which is choice i'm choosing this because i want it and then like if we can get back to that there's a lot of latent power that we have to access and loss i don't know maybe that's my biased experience um and perspective is that there is like a sacrifice um in the truest sense of the word that is that marks the threshold of initiation to that power right because you don't have a choice when you don't know that you have a choice Mm -hmm. but the moment that you do there is an invocation of courage um that is required and the courage is simply the willingness to walk into that abyss of what it what you imagine is a a kind of loss and associated grief and pain and Mm -hmm. fear that feels immolating that feels like it would destroy you into like you know a billion bits um and you can't take those steps until you're ready i mean i've spent my entire career trying to understand the ingredients of readiness you know and maybe you have some insight you know because i i haven't been able to figure it out because it's it always has seemed that the the patients for example that i watched walk into medical history literally like miracles of remission befalling them what made them ready the moment they were ready and then if i had knocked on their door a month before and said hey i think you're you could maybe uh i don't know come off of five meds you've been on for 25 years and never be a psych patient again nothing would have happened nothing would have alchemized but there was some ingredient um that that arose from within them that created the conditions that that crucible just came into form and let's try this on yeah let's let's try this on and see how see how we like it as a as a potential answer to that yeah so let's say that our belief system which is our reality construct it's actually the world that we live in nobody lives in the same world because our world is based on perception now that doesn't mean it's not objective truth or objective Mm. things but our perception of the objective is always subjective Right. We cannot escape our perspective, our subjectivity. We just can't escape it. So every nobody's watched the same movie. Nobody knows the right. same person. Nobody's Seen read the, the same, same color, book. Yeah. It's all 
it's all colored by our perspective right so in this world that we've built that world like all things is part of our identity it becomes like forms part of our identity structure identity is an entity our identity is an entity and that entity wants to survive Mm -hmm. and it wants to survive the world that it's in is part of its survival so it has an immune system that defends against and protects against beliefs that could destroy the entity of Mm -hmm. your identity which is your world and so the idea that you could go into remission requires the willingness for your identity to die that's right if you believe that so it's almost like the permeability it's how if you have a really robust immune system of of keeping out information that would destroy your identity because your identity structure itself is really strong then and it's impermeable you know then that idea won't be able to enter your reality that won't be able to flower and fruit inside your reality so i would say i would propose that the key part of being ready is your willingness to have a malleable your willingness to be malleable with your identity structure or the point at which your identity structure and the world that you've perceived has failed so radically that you are just ready to discard it so that you're able to die and be reborn with a new with a real new identity and it can't be just the mind no it can't be just like ah, i watched a joe dispenza podcast and now i'm fucking ready like your cells have to believe it that's why he's always pushing you to get to that emotional state mm-hmm. that reality the emotions that are translating the information into the body into the felt sense of oh we're already healed it's creating a new reality world that you're in and with that in his teachings which i think are great is if you live in that reality where your cancer is in remission or your whatever your Crohn's is healed or whatever the thing is that you live in that world, well, does it matter whether it objectively it happens or not? It matters much less mm-hmm. because already your world, in your world, it's already done. And so you get to live that life to a certain degree. And that's like, that's the ultimate message of it is you get to build your reality. And so I think it's a matter of, like you said, goes back to that first thing. What's the initiation that can show you how malleable and how how just your whole world, your identity structure is just a construct. And so like a new information can come in and like you allow that to come in and then you're in the place where these miracles no longer seem like miracles, but you go like, oh yeah, cool. Because that's consistent and my cells believe that it's possible and my immune system of my belief system is not fighting off this new information anymore. And you understand that as an adult, you can meet those needs that we were discussing through many different avenues, right? That it's not only this futile attempt to meet your needs through a system or a relationship that is showing you it's not there. You know, I always say like going to the allopathic medical system for health and wellness is like going to the butcher to learn about veganism. Like it was never on offer through that conventional system that you could have a meaningful experience of your symptoms as messengers, you know, that anything that you're experiencing has any personal uh, import for you. It's all ran, you know, bad genes, bad timing, you know, just sort of random forces that are befalling you. That system never offered you an experience of even remission. Remission is not, you know, true remission of a chronic illness. That's why they're called chronic illnesses, because they are expected to persist in perpetuity. So if that's not on offer there, and what you actually want to experience is feeling well and whole, why are you going to that system? Why are you persisting there? You're just going to reinforce the belief system that you came with, which is probably one of the reasons why you have are experiencing what you're experiencing. Right. It's but reinforcing you, the reality, the reality world. That and it's in. meeting your needs. So when I am sick, right, chronically sick, what do I get? I get compassion built in to my life from others who pity me, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And who offer me that surrogate hit of love. I get 
n- to say no without having to actually learn to assert my boundaries and express my desires in this clear and direct way. Because of course I'm limited by my illness. I can't do that. Mm. I get to say no all the time. I get to experience the validation of this felt sense of wrongness and brokenness that's always lived within me. All of my patients told me the first time they got a diagnosis, they felt like, see, I knew something was wrong with me. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it ends up being like the prison number, you know, that's put on their vest, but it feels in the moment like it's somebody finally seeing their hurt. And when, you know, we end up over identifying with that wound, with the cancer diagnosis, with the, you know, the mental illness, and then we think that's the problem. It's almost like, you know, imagining that the the fire alarm burned the house down or something like it's, it's missing this opportunity to go in through um, the experience. But I, I think we have to learn how to meet those needs in a different way. And ultimately you're the one who has to meet those needs. So you have to recognize, you know, that I I don't know. So I'm a big proponent of, of shadow work. And I do think a lot of, you know, spiritual approaches and even health and wellness related approaches are short lived in their yield because you're, you're taking your, you know, your inner critic, your protector part from the wheel and you're putting this like benevolent, you know, faith, connected part of you that sees yourself as perfect and whole at the wheel. But fundamentally what happened, you know, to that part of you, it can't be extinguished or just like put back in the closet. So it's like that Walt Whitman quote, like we contain multitudes. And until we can start to see like, oh, I am the self organizing all of these parts. And I can identify the different needs of these different parts that otherwise would seem in conflict and play that conflict out in my external reality. It's almost like I'm funding both sides of the war that I think is mm-hmm. is happening on the outside with whatever it is. I mean, often in the victim triangle, as it applies to medicine, you know, it's it's I'm the sick patient who's the victim. I have the rescuer who is, you know, the the priestly doctor. And who is the villain? Like my body, <laughs> right? Maybe doctor. 